Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another Astro Chat episode. Today we are going to explore the yugas and we're going to see if we can find out which yuga we are in. Now this topic is hotly debated. We've already had a few debates on the channel about which yuga we are in. So if you have an opinion on this, please feel free to let me know in the comments below what you believe, what, what yuga you believe we are in. I would love to know. Some of you are team Dwarpa, some of you are team Kali Yug, and some of you are brand new to this. So that's perfectly fine. I'm going to take you through right now what these yugas are. So if we take a look at that word yuga, what is an English equivalent to that word? Well, I would say the word epoch is pretty good. If we bring up the definition from the Cambridge Dictionary, you'll see that an epoch is a long period of time, especially one in which there are new developments and great change. So visualize this incredibly long stretch of time where humanity as a whole really evolves over the course of hundreds or thousands of years. Now, the word generation is definitely something we study in astrology. You know, when we look at the shift in generations, we're looking at the outer planets. We're looking at Pluto, Uranus, Neptune. You know, you can, you can see changes in generations through those planets. You can see, you know, why the 60s was different to the 70s, that kind of thing. But in this episode, what we're doing is we are looking at really long stretches of time of hundreds or thousands of years. Now, Sri Yukteswar, I've got my uh, info here on the iPad today. Sri Yukteswar was a monk, he was a yogi, he was an astronomer, brilliant mathematician, all round genius, amazing person, great insight, great intuition. And I suppose who's an equivalent to him in the Western world? Maybe Leonardo da Vinci? I'm not sure. Somebody like that. But he worked out that we are in a 24,000 year cycle and there's an ascending cycle of 12,000 years and there's a descending cycle of 12,000 years. Within each arc there are four yugas. So we have Kali Yug, Dwarpa Yug, Treta Yug and Sat Yug. And these correspond to the Greek system of the Iron Age, the Bronze Age, the Silver Age and the Golden Age. Now Sri Yukteswar discovered that the last Kali Yug or the last Iron Age of the ascending arc started at about AD 500. This Iron Age was 1200 years in duration. It's all about materialism and according to him it ended in AD 1700. Now that year ushered in Dwarpa Yug and Dwarpa Yug is a 2400 year period where you'll see things like electrical technology, electrical advancements, atomic energy, all this kind of thing. So now we can see that these yugas are increasing in time. Kali Yuga was 1200, Dwarpa Yuga is 2400. And then we've got Treta Yuga, a 3600 year period of time, which is going to start in AD 4100. It's a little bit far away. I don't think I'll make it, but anyway. Now this age will be marked by telepathic communications, and other time annihilators. Now this I got from the autobiography of a yogi and I wasn't sure what he was referring to with time annihilators but it sounds fascinating. Now after that Tarita Yuga we're going to have Sat Yuga. Sat Yuga is 4,800 years long and it's the final age in an ascending arc and that's when the intelligence of man will be completely developed he will work in harmony with the divine plan. So based on this information, a lot of people rightly believe that we are in Dwarpa Yug right now. Okay, so let's take a look at Team Dwarpa. Those of you who are Team, team Dwarpa, you know, is there evidence to prove that we are definitely in Dwarpa? Well, I would say there is. What I did was I Google searched what was happening around the 1700s because as we just saw 1700 AD is when Sri Yukteswar says that we switched over into Dwarpa. So if that's true I wanted to see okay in, in terms of you know in history what was happening in the 1700s so I just google searched that 
and I came across so many articles like the one I'm going to show you now it says why did the 1700s become known as the age of enlightenment and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a little portion of this article and you'll be able to see that a lot of people consider the 1700s to be a time when humanity really shifted and you know there, there was a marked shift here so I'll just read you this bit here it says by the time of the 1700s distinguished philosophers such as Voltaire and Rousseau began to spread key ideas revolving around religious and political freedom as well as equality and human rights these ideas sp spread like wildfire and people in unequal societies such as France and Haiti began to start revolutions in order to gain equality and freedom. These revolutions instigated other smaller revolts revolving around enlightenment ideas, thus allowing the 1700s to be regarded as the age of enlightenment. Isn't that interesting? And I mean, you could just do a quick Google search about the 1700s. You'll come across a lot of content that is saying that humanity really took a leap up in the 1700s. Now, what about people who are Team Kali Yug? What about you guys? Because you guys have a whole different way of seeing all of this. And I must admit, if I have to pick a camp, I'm going to pick the Kali Yug camp. <clears throat> and the reasons for that are many. One of them is because I grew up, I have grown up in a household where my parents would talk about this stuff. And yeah, sure enough, they, they would frequently say, well, we're in Kali Yug, so that's why the world is the way it is, you know. So why do the Kali Yug people think the way they do? Now for this, we're not looking to Yukteswar. For this, we are looking to the Puranas, okay, which is ancient, ancient Vedic literature on so many different topics. Now, what's important here is the meaning of a year. Okay, so you know in Christianity how they say that, well, God created the world in seven days. And so many people have said that, you know, it's not a literal seven days with 24 hours. It's kind of like each day is thousands of years long. And that's the sort of thinking that we've got here in Team Kali Yug, because we have to look at the meaning of what is a year. So in the ancient literature, they believe that Sure, you know, Satyug is 4,800 years as Yukteswar states. However, each year is a divine year. And in earth terms, this 4,800 years actually equals 1.7 million years. And I'll put the exact uh, figure on the screen so you can see that they've calculated quite a precise figure there. I'm saying roughly 1.7 million years. So to me that makes a lot of sense because an individual incarnation in Satyug you live for thousands of years so if you live for thousands of years there's no way that a Satyug could be 4,800 years long and that's why I'm very much in the team Kali Yug camp I've got a thing here I'd like to quote from Wikipedia Wikipedia quotes the Puranic sources and states that Krishna left when Dwarpa Yug ended. So he left and they are quoting 17th or 18th Feb, 3102 BCE. So that's interesting. They state that yes, Kali Yug will last for 1,200 years, which in earth years, is 432,000 years. So this is really interesting. According to Wikipedia, Kali Yug began 5,122 years ago. And apparently, and this is the slightly depressing part, we have 426,878 years left of Kali Yug. Obviously, that's incredibly depressing. We don't want to think about that too much. But what I did was I went on Quora and I wanted to see what people are saying there. I just want to see, I'm sure people are chatting about this. What have they got to say? And this is where I've got my handwritten notes now. So I've got all kinds of different things here. I've got one person said Kali Yug started 5,000 years ago. Well, yeah, that's okay. That's close to this. Yep, that's right. We have 427,000 years left. Okay, I know where they got that from. One person said Kali Yug ended 21 June at noon 2020 
and that there's a transition period to 2038. That was very unique. I haven't read that before. Some people were talking about 2025, that Kali Yuga, some people say that in 2025, Kali Yuga is going to end. In 25, it's going to begin, some people thought. Uh, I've got another one here. Yes, I, some interesting things here about the 18th of Feb. Some people believe Kali Yuga began midnight, 18th of Feb, 3102 BCE. Some people say 227 AM, 18th Feb, 3102. So you can imagine there are so many different theories about all these things. And what do I believe? Well, what I'll, I'll share with you some of the, the other insights I gained from Cora, but what do I believe? I believe I'm not too far away from the Dwarpa people. Even though I'm Team Kali Yug, I, I definitely think we're on an ascending arc. So evolution, we're definitely ascending. We're on the rise. I don't think we're beginning Kali Yug. We're, you know, it's like we're at a precipice and we're, we're about to fall off. No, I think we're about to fly up. I really do. I, I don't think we're, you know, I don't think Kali Yuga is just 5,000 years old. I don't know. I feel like I feel like what's coming in the next 10 to 20 years is a huge amount of evolution. And for this, I'm thinking about people like Diana Cooper. She's done some amazing work about the next golden age. And there are other futurists and different people that I'm tuning into. And a lot of them are saying that the 30s is going to be quite incredible. And that's what I believe. Let's have a look at the time. We're okay for time. The other thing I thought I would do is just quote from one of the contributors on, uh, not Wikipedia, on Quora. He's given his insights as to what Kali Yuga is all about. And I just thought I would read these out because to me, this sounds like exactly where we are. Let's, let's listen to what this is. So he's written that, and I'll put his name on the screen. So if you wanted to look this content up, you'll be able to find him. You'll be able to find what he wrote. I'm not quoting the whole thing that he's written. I'm just, I just picked out certain bits that I thought were good. So he says that humanity deteriorates in Kali Yuga and falls into barbarism. Humans begin to kill animals for food. They fall under the spell of intoxication. Families break up. Women and children are abused. It says here, increasingly degraded generations conceived accidentally in lust and growing up. By the way, this is all very judgmental stuff, but let's just hear it, right? I'm, I'm not passing any judgment on any of this. I don't mind people who eat meat, all of that. It's all good. I'm not, but this is just what is written here. So don't worry. Um, so generations conceived accidentally in lust and growing up in wild, growing up wild. I don't know, that's what it says here. It's kind of ancient. See, this is the thing with Indian stuff, you have to... Um, like sometimes it's just written in a very archaic way and we have to modernize it. So let's take the judgment out, but let's also see what this is. So they say, yeah, generations conceived accidentally in lust and growing up wild swarm all over the world. Political leadership falls into the hands of unprincipled rogues. See, I agree with that. Criminals and terrorists, again, I might be agreeing with that, who use their power to exploit the people. Entire populations are enslaved and put to death. The world teems with fanatics, extremists, and spiritual artists who win huge followings. I've still got a very small following, thank God. <laughs> among a people completely dazed by hedonism, as well as by cultural and moral relativism. Law and justice are determined by one's prestige and power. Marriage ceases to exist as a holy union. Men and women simply live together on the basis of attraction and verbal agreement and only for pleasure. Which, yeah, I mean, okay, whatever. Anyway, women wander from one man to another. Men no longer look after their parents in their old age and fail to provide for their own children. One's beauty, oh, this one's hilarious. I, and this is in bold as well. One's beauty is thought to depend on one's hairstyle. Gosh, that is, yeah, I mean, I didn't do much with my head to look at that. It's a mess already. Anyway, who cares? Uh, filling the belly is said to be the only purpose in life. Cows are killed once their milk production drops. Religious observances are performed solely for the sake of 
reputation. This was interesting. Severe droughts and plagues are everywhere. Illness, hunger and fear spread. Nations are continually at war with one another. The number of princes and farmers decline. Heroes are assassinated. Yes, and this one's in bold. And I thought that is actually very striking. I agree with that. Heroes are assassinated. The working classes want to claim regal power and enjoy royal wealth. Kings become thieves. They take to seizing property rather than protecting the citizenry. The new leaders emerge from the labourer class and begin to persecute religious people, saints, teachers, intellectuals and philosophers. Civilization lacks any kind of divine guidance. The sacred books are no longer revered. False doctrines and misleading religions spread across the globe. Isn't that interesting? So I resonated with some of this, not all of it. I, I don't agree with with all of it and I don't think things are that bad on the whole. <clears throat> One of the other things I've been thinking is that the Course in Miracles states, and I'm pretty sure this is from the Course in Miracles, do you know let me just check, love brings up anything unlike itself, quote, where is it from, Let's see if I can find it. So yeah, yeah so the quote that I've got here is love brings up anything unlike itself to be healed and that comes from the Course in Miracles and what I believe ultimately is that we are on an ascending arc up and and that love the the love quotient on the planet has risen okay love is rising on the planet it has risen and it's brought anything unlike itself to be healed so that's why we're seeing a lot of really bad stuff at the moment. And we're seeing that because some love has actually come and pushed it up. Now, if we can clear this, clean this up, sort it out, then we're on, you know, an even more loving plane than we were before. That's what I believe. But you let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to know what you have to say. Do you believe that we are on an upward arc? Do you believe things are getting worse? How do you see all of this? I'd love to know. So thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.